Okay, so this PowerPoint is the bi about our BiPAP. It's a bi-level positive airway pressure ventilation. Um, these pictures right here are showing our BiPAP machines that we use. The one on the left is the BiPAP machine. The one on the right is our CPAP machine. Sometimes the patients will bring their own CPAP machines and they'll look pretty similar. Um, our objectives for this um, presentation are going to be about our BiPAP, uh, the indications for it, any contraindications, um, setting up the BiPAP machine, adverse effects, and of course, most importantly, management and troubleshooting. Okay, here's a review of the common terms and definitions we'll be using. Of course, the first one already mentioned, the BiPAP. Our second one can sometimes be used interchangeably with the BiPAP term. It's a NIV, non-invasive ventilation. It's the use of a breathing support administered through a face mask or nasal mask, anything but invasive. Um, we have our positive and expiratory pressure. Th that's the PEEP, and this is the pressure in the lungs above any atmospheric pressure <clears throat> that exists at the end of expiration. And this assists in keeping from the alveoli from collapsing with each expiration. Um, of course, our ABG, our arterial blood gases, this is a sampling of a blood to determine any carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the arteries. Our last term is the uh, tidal volume, and that's the amount of air that is moved into and out of the lungs during each ventilation uh, cycle. So what is BiPAP? Um, BiPAP provides two alternating levels of positive airway pressure. So when you get uh, physician orders, you'll have a top number and a bottom number. The first one is called IPAP, which is inspiratory positive airway pressure. And this assists in ventilation and in removal of carbon dioxide. Um, the next number, which is on the bottom, it's the EPAP, which is expiratory positive airway pressure. And this one assists with oxygenation, which keeps alveoli open, and this allows for better gas exchange. So indications for the use of BiPAP would include um, obstructive sleep apnea, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD exacerbation, acute heart failure, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and congestive heart failure. These um, highlighted in red are the most common indications used for BiPAP, but there are some other reasons as to why they would also consider the use of BiPAP in positive pressure, which include, of course, respiratory distress syndrome, pneumonia, central sleep apnea, um, obesity-related hypoxemia, and weaning from mechanical ventilation, and neuromuscular diseases. And a lot of times when we get these patients from ICU to progressive, we would probably be util utilizing more of a uh, weaning from mechanical ventilation on our unit. So there are some contraindications for the use of a BiPAP machine. Um, of course, inability to cooperate and protect the airway or they are unable to clear their secretions. Um, any severely impaired consciousness, um, except of course hypercapnic encephalopathy. Um, if it's prescribed by the physician, he um, will give you the order for BiPAP. Um, any facial surgery, trauma, or deformity that doesn't allow to, uh, to create a good seal with the mask. Um, of course, respiratory arrest or una unstable cardiorespiratory status. Um, we would be at that point coding them and intubating them. Um, any, any inability to protect the airway, if they are unable to swallow or cough efficiently, um, we would need to consider not putting on the BiPAP machine. And of course, um, as discussed with a physician, any esophageal or gastric surgery um, that would prevent them from being on a BiPAP. Hi, my name is Lauren Pittman. I am a respiratory therapist here at MSTH, and I'm going to be talking to y'all a little bit today about our CPAP machines and our BiPAP machines. Um, so I'm going to start off over here. This is our Respironics of DreamScape. We like to call them our baby BiPAPs. Um, these are a lot of times used for patients with things like OSA um, to kind of help alleviate some of those symptoms. 
And there's a few kind of key things to know when you're looking at this. First of all, the parts. So this is going to be your actual machine part right here. It's this very front part. And then back here is going to be your water tank. And a really, really important part, whenever you have a patient that's using one of these, you want to make sure that you're using sterile water to fill their water tanks. And it's really cool, you slide this back and you can actually take the tank out. It has a little max fill line right there so you know exactly where to put the water. You place it back in the machine. And then whenever you close it, it seals it so that way you don't have any type of spills or anything like that happening. Um, other than that, your power button's gonna be right here. You just press it, it'll turn on. And when it turns on, it's gonna show you that the pressure that they're using right here. Now, there's absolutely no way, we call this our patient setting. There's no way to adjust the settings when they're on that that mode right there. So whatever the CPAP was set at, which it should be their settings that are ordered, um, it'll pop up right there for you and the patient cannot adjust that at all. Um, another thing to remember, you will a lot of times have um, physicians that will want to order O2 bleed-ins on our CPAP machines. And that's what this little piece right here is for. So this is a little adapter, we like to call it. It attaches right here and it has this little part that sticks up. Whenever you have an O2 bleed in, you're going to attach the O2 tubing to this little piece right here, and then you're going to attach the other end to the flow meter, and that's where you'll dial, dial in your O2. Um, the circuit will go right here, and then the other side will go to the patient. We do have two types of masks um, that patients will use whenever they have these. We have our full face mask, and then we also have our nasal mask. The nasal mask tends to be a little bit more comfortable for patients, so if you have a patient that's claustrophobic, uh, this might be a better choice to go to. And they have, it's really cool, these little things right here on the side of the package. And this is gonna show you exactly what size mask this patient's gonna need. It even has a little diagram right here that shows you where exactly to measure. You kick this and you can measure it on the patient. That'll show you what size that they need to wear. And the nasal one has that, as well as our full face mask. So it's pretty easy to determine what size they need. And then you actually put it on them. And then they have these little clasps right here. And whenever you want to take it off, instead of having to undo all this Velcro that takes, you know, like five minutes, I'm sure, you just unhook the clasp and it will come right off. So an easy, easy way to make sure to get it on and off the patient quickly. So that's really about all um, in terms of the CPAP. Those aren't too bad. They're pretty simple to use. Um, and a lot of patients will actually come with their own CPAP machine whenever they do come into the hospital. So as long as we have an order, they're good to go on using those as well. Um, going over to our BiPAP machines, these are our V60s, these are our Respironics. Pretty simple to use also. First things before you turn them on, you want to make sure that you have your O2 tubing connected to the wall outlet. These are transport vents as well. So you have little O2 tubings right here that can connect to cylinders that will attach right here at the bottom of our V60s but we do want to make sure that they're plugged into the wall outlets whenever they're in a room. That way we're not using our tanks and everything. Um, we also want to check to make sure that we have a filter here. We need to have one of these on every single BiPAP that we are using. So make sure and double check that, as well as it being plugged in. Um, the battery will last for about six hours, but we do want to keep it plugged in unless we're transporting the patient. Uh, for these, you're just going to press the on button right here. Everything will turn on. And I have a little test line connected for it this time. So this is going to be your most common uh, setting or your most common mode right here. This is ST. So when you're looking at this, you're looking at your standard IPAP over EPAP setting, which is probably what most of y'all are most comfortable with. Your IPAP is going to relate to your ventilation, whereas your EPAP is going to relate more to your oxygenation. And these are your actual set numbers right here. So whenever you get an order that says, you know, BiPAP 10 over 5, you're gonna click right here, make sure this is set to 10, press accept. EPAP, you'll want five and you can move it with that. Press accept. That'll be your O2 percentage and then your rate. And those are really the main ones to worry about right here. Again, everything that the patient is set for is gonna be right on the bottom of the screen. When you're looking at the top of the screen right here, that's where you're gonna see what the patient is actually doing. So this is their actual rate that they're doing. This is kind of a backup rate. This is the tidal volume that they are returning. So if you have a doctor call and they're trying to see what's the return tidal volume that this patient is getting. On this one, it would be 82, and it's gonna be right there for you. This right here is gonna be your minute ventilation and your peak pressure. And as you can see right here, our alarms are different colors on here. So anything that comes up in red or black is gonna be a high priority alarm. That's something we need to go, okay, we need to get this fixed right now. 
Whereas we're also gonna have alarms that are yellow and those are a little bit lower priority alarms. Um, so you do wanna make sure and look out for both of those. In terms of your alarms, you're gonna find those right here under your alarm button. So these are all the alarms that are gonna be set. And these should already be set for the patients whenever the BiPAPs are set up. These should be set up and ready to go already. Um, but if you do need to find them, they're right there under the alarm settings. Other than that, you wanna make sure your leak, just a few key reminders, your leak we wanna to try to keep under around 60. This is obviously gonna vary from patient to patient. If you have a patient that has a big massive beard, your leak is gonna be a little bit higher than another patient. Um, but we do wanna to try to keep that at 60 or below, just to ensure that they're getting the most oxygen and the best tidal volumes that they could possibly get out of these machines. Um, I'm trying to think. Other than that, if you wanna be able to see the full waveforms, you're gonna reset your alarm right here and these will go all the way across. Um, that's about all on your BiPAP machines. Modes are gonna be right here. ST is gonna be your most common in terms of that. Um, same mask as our CPAP, same way they're fit and everything. So that should all be the same in terms of those. I think that's about all. And if we wanna put it on standby? Standby, so you have a nice little standby button right here. You're gonna click there and it's gonna give you directions. So you're actually gonna to have to remove the mask, make sure the patient is not on the BiPAP. If they are on the BiPAP, it will not allow you to go into standby. And it'll actually kick you off of the screen after a certain amount of time. So you wanna make sure that these are completely off the BiPAP, that your patient does not have a mask on, that they are good to go and before it will enter uh, standby mode. <laughs>
Okay, so for applying the BiPAP machine, um, you want to assess the patient for any anxiety and offer emotional support as needed. Um, also, to, something to consider is that this anxiety could be related to hypoxia. So we always want to consider that and um, continue to reassure them that we are going to find the, the answer and solution to their shortness of breath or anxiety. Um, we want to raise the head of the bed and so that way we can allow for a full lung expansion. Um, and also when you're applying the mask, um, use the quick release straps. That way um, the top part of your mask is already fitted to their head. And if you use a quick release, it'll be, um, the fit will go on easily each time with application. Um, also, you wanna assess for any air leaks. Um, sometimes these patients might have an NG tube in place or um, you wanna make sure that they do have their dentures in as well to provide the, the full uh, seal with their mouth. Um, also, you wanna continue to assess for anxiety, claustrophobia, um, and offer emotional support throughout the whole um, treatment. And you always wanna evaluate and intervene and notify physician if the BiPAP machine is not helping them. Our next slide includes any adverse effects that our patients could possibly have with the BiPAP machine. Of course, um, mask intolerance and anxiety is something that they, they could have. Nasal congestion or dryness because of all that air being pushed into their um, oral cavity. Um, they might have difficulty in secretion clearance. Um, also with their nasal bridge, they could there could be an ulceration formed or redness. We want to continu continuously assess for that. Gastric distension or bloating. Um, air leaking through the mouth. Uh, continued drowsiness. Skin, eye, or sinus irritation. Headaches. And inability to get comfortable when going to sleep. Okay, so here's a very important slide that you want to review more closely. Um, in regards to the adverse effects of the mask, BiPAP mask, um, one of them, of course, is a mask intolerance. You want to make sure you measure the nasal bridge to, to underneath their mouth correctly and use the fittings that are on the bags with the BiPAP masks. <clears throat> you want to also make sure there's minimal strap tension to control air leaking. Um, a lot of times they don't like the mask because there is an air leak and it's blowing air into their eyes and they're just uncomfortable with it and they refuse to use it. Um, another thing is if they are willing to slowly adapt to wearing the mask, that would help them um, as opposed to telling uh, them refusing it altogether. Um, RT does have some cushions that go over the nasal bridge, and those are, are used to kind of help assist with the tightness of the mask and also preventing redness. Um, another adverse effect, of course, is nasal congestion and dryness in the mouth, and that's just because of all the uh, positive air going into their mouth. Um, you will, sometimes there's also humidification offered that respiratory therapy could provide. Um, we could do saline um, to moisten their nasal passages. That would be through your physician order. Um, you also want to provide oral care every shift and or more frequently as needed. This helps like moisten their mucous membranes. It helps uh, prevent any breakdown in the mucous membranes and allows for better comfort if they know that their oral care and their, their face will be moistened and washed. Um, another important thing that also goes with um, ulceration prevention, the nasal bridge or redness, um, we, uh, we want to minimize any strap tension again and don't put it too tight to where it's going to create any pressure. Um, use the silicone spacers or soft cloth liners um, and also washing their face, like intermittently removing the mask to moisten their face, dry their face and um, prior to the application of the mask again. Um, for gastric distension and bloating, um, you also want to consider using lower pressure, but that would be a physician order. Um, you want to also 
have them eat lighter dinners. If these patients um, use the BiPAP machine at night only, um, if they eat a lighter dinner, it will prevent them from having so much bloating after their dinner um, with all that positive air going inside of them. Um, and also another thing that could help with that would be not eating less than two hours before bedtime. Okay, things to look for for your patients on the BiPAP machine. First one is a pneumothorax, and this is due to an increase in intrathoracic pressure. Um, next one is conjunctivitis. It's due to the leakage of the air around the bridge of the nose, so we want to make sure we have a tight, uh, good seal. Um, gastric distension is due to air being forced into the upper airway and entering into the stomach. Um, also, aspiration, um, and that's due to higher positive airway pressures secondary to gastric insufflation. So we always want to make sure that um, we are able to use a quick release straps and have our suction um, readily available in case they start throwing up, in case they get nauseous, so we can suction and always have their head of the bed up. So here are five steps to addressing the issue. Um, if your patient's on the BiPAP machine and not tolerating it, or you just, uh, you wanna recognize the problem that they're having, uh, evaluate the possible causes of the problem and try to assist and um, implement anything that could help them. Um, you want to determine the appropriate intervention um, and also ask your physician, uh, notify him if any medication is needed, any other uh, treatment is needed, and um, implementing strategies to correct the problem. Okay, signs of respiratory distress to look for include your breathing rate. Um, if they have an increase in number of breaths, um, any color changes around their mouth, their lips, their fingernails, um, any grunting noises and breathing when the person exhales, um, no, nose flaring, um, that could mean all that they're having trouble with their breathing. Um, any retractions in their chest, um, you wanna see if um, there's any areas that are sinking, and this could be <clears throat> seen under the rib cage or around the muscles. Okay, thank you for watching this presentation, and if you have any further questions, go ahead and reach out to your educator and also our respiratory team. They are of great help and always willing to assist us with our patients.